Hello, it's me. Welcome to another episode of Achieving Perfection. I'm Kermit, also known as Nalfazar, and today we're going to look at Ravnica at War, Promise, which is my beloved Miss Piggy's node. Mwah, she's so beautiful. So, per the usual, going to go ahead, show off the decks that I would suggest, and then I'm going to get into the node, and then I'll go into deck building if you can't build either of my decks, and then I'll get into why it is that I chose what I chose for the decks. So for newer players, I would go ahead and use something like this right here on the left. And then for players who have like pretty much everything, I would go ahead and use something more like this right here. All right. So let's get into the event and the node. So first things first, this is sort of funky. It's got special rules where we can only use Origins, Ravnica, War of the Spark, and Core. We cannot use our Eldraine cards. Second up, we've got a permanent support. So the permanent support reads, whenever you match this support's gem or deal five or more damage to your opponent's Planeswalker, reinforce this support. At the end of your turn, if this support has eight or more reinforcements, fetch the first two spells from your library and give them full mana. Then destroy X gems where X is the number of this support's reinforcements, and this support loses all of its reinforcements. This support is particularly nice for this event because there are a lot of objectives around spells, so this is going to get us those spells. Now, for the red node, the one that I'm covering in this video, we have to use a red planeswalker, and then for the objectives, we need to win the fight, we need to deal 20 or more damage with spells during the fight, and we need to cast five or more creatures that are goblins, elementals, warriors, or shamans. Because this states cast, we can't use things like Finale of Devastation or Killer Instinct, those both count as summon, and Cranko, who summons a bunch of tokens, only will count if he is cast, but the tokens don't count. So just be careful with that. Now, when you get into the deck building for this node, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your cards, narrow down your sets, select spells, and then type in damage. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check for damage because really this is going to help you dictate what you're going to do with the rest of the node. Ideally, with the goblins, the elementals, the warriors, the shamans, Pretty much all of the good ones are red anyways, so you don't have to worry about splicing other colors. And to that note, to that note, to that extent, like most of the red cards or most of the cards that do damage are going to be red as spells too. But yeah, so cards that I would take a look at here. So there is a beautiful six mana card called Justice Strike. It serves as creature removal and deals damage. This does count as dealing damage with spells, so this is particularly nice. I also really like a few of the other common options. So things like Gravitic Punch. So if you can get a really big first creature, like if you can actually get a creature to 20 power and play Gravitic Punch, then that automatically completes your dealing damage with spells during the fight. Furthermore, Gravitic Punch has Jumpstart, so you can use it twice, which is really nice. So it can it can put in a lot of damage for one card as a spell. So if you're a newer player, you've gotten this common. It'll do a lot of good work for you on the node. Thrash does basically the same thing as Gravitic Punch, but we can only use it once. However, it does also let us target a creature. So I actually prefer Thrash, but Gravitic Punch has its merits too. Electro Dominance is kind of like the best case scenario for this because if you cast two electro dominances you're going to deal 20 damage with spells and you're going to get the mana from electro dominance so pretty solid other than that there are a few other nifty little options things that i wouldn't necessarily normally use but for this node are going to put in a lot of work so chandra's ignition if you don't have better options is going to deal six to each creature your opponent controls on the battlefield. So if your opponent has three creatures, that counts for 18 damage. And then that's going to go ahead and do most of that warlock objective for you. So pretty nifty. Now, apart from the spells, the next thing you're going to want to do is 
go to your creatures and check out which goblins, elementals, warriors, and shamans you have. I would start with elementals because those are kind of the best, and then go from there. Now, I happen to love things like Cavalier of Thorns. It's an elemental. The Cavaliers are pretty strong. You do want to be careful, though, with them because we need to cast five creatures and you don't want to kill your opponent too quickly. I would not use Yarok this time. There are a lot of bugs with Yarok, so try and avoid this so that you don't get crashes. If they fixed it and you're watching this video and it's been fixed like sometime in the future, go ahead and use Yarok. Yarok is an amazing card and it's really fun to use. It's just at the time of my making this video, it's causing crashes. So something that a lot of people should have is Cytoplast Rootkin. So this card here is an exclusive, but it's an event reward. So as long as you've done this Ravnica at war, but the green version, you get the Rootkin and it's going to put in some good work for you as a 5-5 five, five, for 12. I actually particularly like, and I know that I've mentioned this card in a few other episodes of Achieving Perfection, but Volcanic Rambler. So it's 8 mana, it's an elemental, it has 5 power, so every time it hits your opponent, it's going to be triggering this permanent support, which is really nice. And it's going to give you more mana, which is going to help you ideally cast more creatures or more spells to do more damage. So Volcanic Rambler is kind of like a poor man or a not like overly rich man's amazing card. I suppose you don't have to be a man to use Volcanic Rambler, so pronouns, but whatever. All right, moving on. Goblins. I also love goblins. Goblins are me homies. I love them. I should have just typed in goblin singular. Yeah. Okay. Good move. Good move. Cranko is the obvious choice here. I'm going to be using Cranko myself because he puts in just so much work that I can't not use him. You just have to be careful not to kill your opponent too fast if you use Cranko. Goblin Ringleader is an amazing choice too. Actually, Goblin Ringleader is one of my favorite things you can do for this node. You could even just go with like Goblin Ringleader and Cranko as the only two creatures in your deck and do just fine. So the Ringleader is going to fetch the first two goblins from your library, put them in your hand. So if you play the Ringleader and you've got a way to cast those other two, that counts for three goblins. And if one of those two that you fetched is one of the Ringleaders, so another Ringleader, then just that ringleader and then the next ringleader which will fetch you two more goblins and you fetch those goblins and play them that's all five of your goblins right then and there really really easy to complete your objective so i might even wind up trying this out myself with cranko so ringleader plus cranko equals much love other options here goblin electromancer this is a goblin it makes your spells cheaper you're going to see this in other episodes in this particular series, especially for this particular version of the event, but it makes your spells cheaper, so it's going to make it easier to cast them and get that 20 damage off, which is really nice. I like this one a lot. And then from the Warrior Shaman group, there is, I think it's a Shaman that I particularly like. I mean, there's there's some of both, right? But uh, let's see. Are you a Shaman? No, it's a Warrior. Who am I kidding? Of course it's a warrior. Warrior. It destroys gems, which is cool. Very cool. It's a big beefy thing. Bah, humbug. Was it a shaman after all? And I just missed it. Hmm. Maybe I'm being silly. Here, I'm going to go this way. This way I know exactly where it is. Just watch. It's going to be an Eldraine card. And I'm going to be extra sad and bite my words. Sunder Shaman, you. Ha! Not Eldraine. I just, I just suck at finding things. And you are a Shaman. So this card here, it makes it so that whenever it deals damage to your opponent, you draw, you just you destroy a block of gems, which helps you gain mana. It's a 5-5, five, five, so it helps with this support right here and is super awesome. Ding, ding, ding. Hooray! All right. Now, what would I suggest from my own decks? So, 
I suppose I should have just stayed here. Volcanic Ramblers, already in here. I pointed it out. Sunder Shaman, already in here. Electromancer, already in here. Justice Strike and Gravitic Punch, I've already mentioned. Exquisite Firecraft. This one is just going to deal damage to whatever you want. Serves as removal or direct damage, which is great. Demolish is going to help you with destroying pesky supports that your opponent has. Gateway Plaza is unfortunately the only popper gem converter that we have because we can't use the Eldrain lands here. And then Fireblade Artist is just in here as an extra shaman. If you have something else that you can throw in, do so. Fireblade Artist isn't great. I just threw it in because it's a low mana cost. With haste, that'll swing pretty quickly. The final card is Sword of the Animist. This one is in here for a few reasons. One, it's going to buff a creature, so it's going to make it so that your Gravitic Punches hit harder. Two, it's going to go ahead and destroy gem blocks, which will help you get rid of supports. And three, those gem blocks being destroyed will give you mana. So since we can't use as much gem conversion here, unless we have more cards, then Sword of the Animist will put in some good work for you. So this deck should run you right and be pretty solid. Now, the one that I'm going to use, and... Uh, I don't know. I'm actually really tempted to swap out the Cavalier for the Ringleader. Like, really, really tempted. But I'll go over this version of the deck. So, Krenko is here as a Goblin, and it's really based on Krenko plus Season of Growth. So, Krenko attacks, produces all the tokens in the world, and then all those tokens are going to draw you all the cards in the world with Season of Growth. Then we have Creature Fetch in the form of Court of Calling, which fetches and then plays it. And then Incubation, which just fetches it and then allows us to play it later. However, Incubation has the nice added bonus of exiling creatures, which is pretty nifty. Electrodominance is here for our damaging spell. Cavalier of Thorns is here for protection and then for fetching us lands. And then for the lands, because we can't use the Eldrain cycle lands, they're going to be dual gem converters. They're both going to be converting to the same thing. And it's going to be Steam Vents and Temple of Epiphany. So I chose these two because they're red-blue, and Season of Growth is going to be going on a green gem. So by converting to red and blue, it's less likely to take away shields from Season of Growth. So you could go ahead and choose any pairing of duels if you're running Sarkon, but these are the two that I personally am choosing. For removal, I've got Death Sprout. Like I said, get the lands, kill things. And then Casualties of War is going to get rid of some of everything. So this deck will also run you right. I've tested it out. The only thing that I would potentially change if you wanted is to swap the Cavalier of Thorns for the Goblin. So I hope this helps you. I hope you get perfect, and I'll see you in the next one.